Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. I wish everyone a blessed Feast of the Cross. The Feast of the Cross is a three-day feast, and it's, uh, uh, it's the conclusion of this. Of the, in the first month, we celebrate the Coptic New Year on the first of, of the Coptic month of Tut, which was September 11th. And then we go all the way in a joyful spirit, joyful tune, all the way to the Feast of the Cross, which is the third, today is the third day ending the three-day Feast of the Cross. And in today's gospel, we have <clears throat> the story of Zacchaeus. And it's a beautiful story because you see a life redeemed and restored. But what is so beautiful about this story is that amidst all of the crowds, we know that Zacchaeus climbed a tree because he couldn't see Jesus because of the crowds. But Jesus was coming to look for Zacchaeus. Though Zacchaeus couldn't see him, Jesus saw Zacchaeus. Jesus saw Zacchaeus. And when did he see Zacchaeus? In the midst of his sin. Zacchaeus at this time <clears throat> in which Christ encountered Zacchaeus was not like in the beginning of turning things around, in the beginning of changing his life and making things better and making promises to God was the exact opposite. Jesus came and he said, Zacchaeus, come down. <clears throat> he said, Zacchaeus, <coughs> make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your house. And the people reacted. And they said, he has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. It's clear that in the Jewish culture, you don't, you don't just make your dwelling or, or spend the night or make friendships with people who are publicly known as those that have rejected God. <clears throat> as they're calling him a sinner, he's saying this is a public sinner. All of us have our private sins. But this man is a public sinner. This one is a tax collector and he's cheating God's people. He's cheating the Jews from their taxes. The Romans used to tell the tax collector that you can collect a certain amount of taxes. So let's say somebody owes the Romans $100. Charge whatever you want. You give the Romans the $100. If you want to charge them $10,000, charge them $10,000. You get to keep the rest. And so, of course, this person would always be enticed to increase the taxes, to betray even his own people. And so you have to imagine a person like this who is a public sinner... But Jesus doesn't have public sinners and private sinners. Jesus doesn't have, it's okay if your sins are private and nobody really knows about them. That's okay, it's just in secret. But the people who are sinning in public, that's a different story. These people should be treated poorly. These people should be rejected. In God's eyes. And this is, where we have to challenge ourselves. So the people that are complaining, saying he has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. Do I have a question? Are you sinners? The people that are saying that this man is a sinner, are you also a sinner? But these people came to the conclusion that we're not so bad, that we haven't totally rejected God. <clears throat> but Zacchaeus, he is the one. Today I want you to understand that the Lord's eyes are seeking people. The last verse of today's gospel says, For the Son of Man did not come except to seek and to save that which was lost. God loves the lost. The Lord Jesus is, is, is seeking desperately for the lost because he loves them so much. You say, well, why would he love the lost so much? What about everybody else? When he knows that somebody has become under the grip of sin and, and, and Satan and temptation, the heart of a, of a loving God and the heart of a loving father is bleeding for somebody that has been taken captive by the enemy. They say every bad behavior comes from an unmet need. <coughs> Every bad behavior comes from an unmet need. So on the outside, you and me are looking at Zacchaeus and we're saying, 
Zacchaeus is a terrible person. But the eyes of Jesus, what do they see? They see that Zacchaeus has some need that he's hungry for, that he's, that's not satisfied. And so he's, he's acting this way. He's betraying his people. He's stealing from people. He's uh, uh, socializing with the tax collectors and the Romans, all these people. Because he has an unmet need. This is where we, the people of God, need to change our hearts. We, the people of God. When we look to people with bad behaviors, we have to be able to say that every bad behavior comes from an unmet need. They need something. As opposed to blaming and attacking and judging somebody who has a past sin, somebody who has a public sin, and say, do you know what that person did? No, 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 no. What would the eyes of Jesus want each and every one of us to see? What would Jesus want us to see? That God would want us to look to people and say, that person is a wounded soul. That person needs love. That person needs healing. But they did one, two, and three. Yeah, because they're starving for love. And they could not find anyone to love them. So then the eyes of God turn to you. And say, okay, this person is starving for love. I know why they do what they do. You who are not a sinner. As, as we see here in today's gospel, that Zacchaeus was a sinner. But we're not sinners. Okay. Then did you love them with the love of Christ? You might say, no. I rejected them. I judged them. I pushed them away. I made sure everyone stayed away from these people. And Jesus is going to say, well, you're far from me. So you can't be part of the kingdom of God with those eyes. Sinners can. You know why? Because sinners know themselves and they know their shame as soon as Jesus... The prophet, the rabbi, the one whom everybody is seeking, came and looked at him and said, Zacchaeus, come down. I want to stay in your house. That was it. Zacchaeus changed everything. Jesus didn't preach yet. He didn't tell him any words. He didn't tell him the Ten Commandments. He didn't tell him how could you. He didn't tell him where have you been. He, he didn't tell him what were you thinking. All he said was, as soon as Jesus said, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your house. And the people complained. And then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor, and if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. Forget Zacchaeus right now. Put Zacchaeus on the... Zacchaeus is saved by Jesus. Zacchaeus is loved by Jesus. I wonder what the look of Jesus was like to everybody else who was judging Zacchaeus. I wonder if, if the Lord Jesus was looking at everyone else and saying, there you go. You see the heart of this man? I didn't need to say anything. And he's going to give... Not everybody what they deserve, what he took from them, he's going to give fourfold. Do you see the heart of a changed person that is really seeking Jesus? I wonder the look that Jesus gave Zacchaeus in compassion, in love, and Zacchaeus felt so much love that he said, that's all I needed. And his bad behavior, every bad behavior comes from an unmet need, his bad behavior changed with one look of Jesus' eyes. I wonder if the rest of the people ever changed. I wonder if Jesus looked to them and said, do you see how you were looking at Zacchaeus? Zacchaeus is way better than you. He said, what do you mean? We didn't steal from our people. He said, yeah, you're right. But you didn't love. Zacchaeus loved. We need to turn our hearts and our minds back to the heart of Christ. 
We cannot be the children of God until we understand the heart of God and specifically the heart of Jesus that was manifested to us in the flesh. As all of us are standing here, we're sitting, we're hearing the readings, I should say, Lord, I need to have the heart and the eyes of Jesus. You come here and you take communion so that you can go be Christ to the world with the eyes of love that see somebody with, with bad behaviors and say, they have some need that has not been met. Let me meet that need. Let me give them love. Let me show them security. Let me show them that they are valued, that they have worth, that they are precious in the sight of God. What would that do to the world? Today, as you walk through the church and you're looking at how low somebody's skirt is or if somebody's dress is cut or if somebody is wearing something that they shouldn't wear and you're looking with those eyes and say, there we go, we got another sinner coming into the church. This story is for you. It's going to happen. We're all going to look. And I wish that if people came off the street into this place, everybody would be, would be able to say, wow, how can we feed a hurting world? How can we feed the broken hearts, those who have been betrayed? Do we know the story of Zacchaeus? Do we know how his parents treated him? Do we know his household or how he grew up? Do we know the environment in which he was raised? Do we know if he was given access to our Jewish teachings? We don't know anything. But you and me, we know. You were raised in the church and I was raised in the church and I've been here since, since I was a baby. And I've been having access to this kingdom of God for God knows how many years. And still, my heart doesn't want to be like Jesus. You are going to be measured and, and held accountable by how much you love. That even the sinner woman who came and was restored by Jesus, who was washing his feet with her tears and wiping them with the hair of her head, he said, she loved much for she was what? Forgiven much. So what was the measure of Jesus? Not whether she became a good woman. It was that she what? She loved much. Don't look at her because she loved much. This is the heart of Christ. Today the eyes of Jesus are looking for Zacchaeus. Today the best spirit to have in this church is to say, Lord, I am Zacchaeus. I'm the sinner. And we in the Coptic church, in the Orthodox church, we have our, this prayer of Jesus, the Jesus prayer, in which we say, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, what? The sinner. That my identity when I stand before God is I the sinner. Who are you? I the sinner. St. Paul says, who are you? I am the chief of sinners. I'm not just the sinner. I am the chief of sinners. I the sinner. But what about him? I the sinner. I don't have eyes for him or for her. I the sinner. And Jesus loves that person. Jesus loves that person. So today, you approach communion. Not that, thank God, I have a bad habit. I didn't do it this week. So I'm, I'm good. I can take communion. No. You come and you say, as you're approaching the Eucharist, you say, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy. I the sinner. I am the sinner. I am unworthy that you would enter under the roof of my house. Imagine that Zacchaeus went under the roof of Zacchaeus. I'm sorry, if Jesus went under the roof of Zacchaeus and he said, I can live in this house. I can live in this house. Before Zacchaeus changed, he hasn't apologized yet. He hasn't turned his direction yet. And Jesus is looking for you. Maybe today you are in the midst of your sin. You are buried in your sin. You are chained by your sin. You are broken by your sin. You are defeated by your sin. 
Jesus is looking through the crowds and he's searching and saying, I'm coming to find you. I am coming to seek and to save that which was lost. Not sinful, not ugly, not dark, just lost. They just lost their way. As a sheep who is lost, I came to seek and to save that which was lost. Look at the heart of Jesus. Look at the heart of Jesus, how he says that you were just lost, but you can be found. You can have a new beginning. And what sin does to us, it hurts us. It breaks up, breaks up everything good inside of me. It gives me anxiety and depression and loneliness and sadness and, and low self-worth and hate for myself. Today, Jesus is saying, I'm seeking for you. Let me restore your life. Let me give you a new beginning. Today, if you've identified yourself as a Zacchaeus, blessed are you. Because today is your lucky day. Jesus came to seek and to save you. Find a priest today. Find a priest today. Sit with one of the fathers and say, Father, I am Zacchaeus. And I'm worse than Zacchaeus. And I promise you, the priest is not going to judge you. Anytime you enter into the room of confession with the priest, you've entered into the no judge zone. Nothing you say is going to bring judgment upon you. But you are inviting the love and restoration of Jesus. Get it off your chest. Whatever it is, how dark, how shameful, how sinful, how embarrassing, you're coming to receive Jesus into your home. Find a priest. Find a priest. You're not coming to be judged. You're coming to be loved by Jesus, to be restored. Find a priest so that you can receive new life and you can find your way again. And the Lord can shower you with his love and his blessing to restore you. And glory be to God forever. Amen.